everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Mode. And today on Hot Mode, we are getting into your celebrity haute couture fall 2023 fashion roast. There are a shit ton of celebrity looks to discuss from the most recent haute couture season. I mean, listen, Cardi B was pretty much the headliner of the four day tour, but there were a bunch of other celebrities that showed up and said, no, I am letting you know I'm here. So without further ado, Let's get into it. First up, we have Ayo Edebury, and she is wearing Tom Brown. Listen, Ayo is a Tom Brown woman. Like, she goes, she lives, she laughs, she loves, all in TB. This was Tom Brown's also first haute couture show ever. Because, I mean, like, the man said, listen, let me deliver. Let me give you something that I give to everybody else for ready to wear, but I'll, I'll do a couture version, too. It was great. It was wonderful. It was perfect. It was gorge. Ayo showed up, and she said, I am also great, I am wonderful, I am perfect, I am gorgeous. And she wore this little strapless blue look. It looks to be some sort of denim, or if it's like a stretch wool that's been dyed maybe blue because we're doing tailoring fabrics because it's Tom Brown. So I'm, I'm really unsure, but we can see that it is a form-fitting sort of strapless dress. It has simple sort of neckline, really easy. There are seams that run all the way down it. It seems to also be that the cups in the actual sort of bra element are a little bit different. It seems to be that the cups of the bra actually run horizontally, at least, the way that the fabric looks, rather than vertically, which the rest of the dress actually runs rather vertically. We can see that the lines move down it. Here on the cup, it seems to run horizontally, and I'm assuming maybe that's because it has a sort of drape angle going on in the cup area, but I'm not exactly sure. As for the blazer, which it's a Tom Brown look, so like a blazer. It is a contrast stitch style, so there's a white contrast stitch that runs all throughout it, the lapels, the pockets, it's, it pretty much runs along every single seam in the actual jacket. And I think that it's fun. I think it's cute. I like the fact that it's the white contrast stitch. I think it adds a little bit of dimension to the look. As for the shoe, she's going for the Tom Brown brogue, but it has like a wooden sort of platform with the red, white, and blue stripe and a big old heel. Here's the thing. I like the jacket. I like the bag. I'm not sold on the rest of the look. I don't really know if the shoes go. I don't really think they make sense here. And the dress I think is fine, but it's not really anything to write home about. It's just not my favorite look from Io and or Tom Brown. It just, it doesn't deliver excitement and pizzazz to me. Next up we have Camilla Cabello and she is wearing Giambattista Stivali. Now listen, I just wanna say Camilla Cabello was like another mainstay of this haute couture season. Interesting choice is what I'm gonna say there. Very interesting. I would love to know the thought process behind it. Regardless, she's wearing this light pink draped halter-ish style John Batista dress. It's not big, over-the-top, frothy ball gown, but I also don't really mind that because I do think that Jamba does things that are outside of that sort of wheelhouse that we all expect of him. I do think that, honestly, it's pretty much like a draped kind of wrap dress style. There's that halter that runs around the neck in a crisscross applesauce moment. There's that deep plunge that does expose a little bit of side booby. There's a sleeve, long pink, and then a sort of belt that wraps in the center and then flows down to the floor. It's not really a dress to write home about, but I do think it's interesting to see Jamba, you know, outside of the normal big tulle frothy ball gown experience. I don't think she looks bad. I just don't think she looks memorable. There was another Camila Cabello moment where she wore Iris Van Herpen. Now listen, this much more memorable. I would say that this is probably the most intriguing I've ever seen Camila Cabello look ever. It is a beautiful dress in this really, really light, light, light purple, pretty much this gorgeous chiffon that runs all the way down. And it has sort of swags of fabric in purple. I don't think that they're 3D printed. They might be laser cut sort of panels that are in like dark purple, light purple, and yellow. And they create this really, really beautiful shoulder on Camilla. I really love the way that they sort of run over each other almost like little waves of purple. We then can see that the bust area is covered by these yellow sort of panels that weave out, which I also love. And then at the waist, there is most definitely sort of an undergarment there, which is fine. But because you have this yellow and this purple sort of butterfly area cutout thing sitting over top, I don't really notice it, which I think is good. Cause I think that that purple and that yellow really, really play off of each other very, very well. I love the way that the sleeve turns into almost like a bell sleeve. And it's because these sort of strips or these laser cut things that it allows the chiffon to sort of create very long over the top, big 
shapes. And so it's really intriguing to see the way that Iris Van Herpen works with these sort of little strips and panels and how she allows them to manipulate the actual fabric underneath. As we move down, we can see that the yellow and the purple sort of becomes bigger and bigger. I love the dress on her. I think it looks futuristic and fun. It doesn't, you know, take over. It doesn't sort of wipe away the Camilla Cabello-isms. I still say her and I say, Senorita. But I do think that it, it's fine. It's nice. It works. I'm actually shocked that I like a Camila Cabello look for once. Couture week. Anything is possible. Our last Camila Cabello look is the Stéphane Roland and it's a one shoulder intriguing style. It almost looks like a seam allowance come to life. We talk about seam allowances a lot recently, but I think that the interesting thing about this dress is you have a panel off of her left shoulder that comes straight across, dips down, and then comes to right around the thigh area. And it's a stiff white piece of fabric. You know what I mean? Like it's really almost looks like, like a post-it note. You know what I mean? Like it looks like a post-it note was turned into a dress. There's also these sort of gold metal pieces that sit in between and I presume that those are what is holding that fabric together. It gives it weight, it gives it intrigue. As the dress moves off of that side sort of panel, we can see that it actually begins to then drape around her body. It doesn't cover the other sleeve because otherwise she would look like a letter. And it sort of moves down and creates a asymmetrical train style. It's a cocktail dress with a big train. The gold bag and the gold shoes and the gold jewelry I think is smart to play off of the gold that's going on in the letter panel. I appreciate again that she's trying something new, something different, something weird, but again like it's weird. It's a weird look. She looks like half of a folded napkin and then half of a crumpled up napkin. I appreciate it. You know, A for effort, C for execution. It doesn't really translate super well a napkin. Then we start the Cardi B ofication of the haute couture season. First up, Cardi B in Balenciaga you know, I feel like I keep talking about like inanimate objects to describe certain things, but here Cardi is wearing this, what looks to be like a loofah-ish ripped toilet paper jacket coat. The thing about the look is it's surely very Balenciaga, I would say. I mean, it's big, it's bold, it's bright, it's something that you can't forget. But I think that this ripped up chiffon, it's just rough to look at. Like again, if you were to cut toilet paper and rip it apart like that's what it would look like and so that's where my mind goes and I'm sure that it was painstakingly crafted and da 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 couture 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 but still looks like toilet paper can't really do anything with it she's wearing a latex bodysuit underneath not really interesting moving on as Balenciaga. Next up we have Cardi wearing Jean-Paul Gaultier because she attended the show to wear this very intriguing catsuit. It is a fully printed catsuit that hits around the ankle area and it has all different little symbols and gestures and motifs. There are chains and what look to be almost like tattoos of some sort, you know, designs you would see in tattoos. There's men that are naked and there's suns and moons and all those kinds of things all wrapped up in it. Listen, if you like motifs and things like this, you know, to each. I do think that there's an intriguing element of where the white and where this navy sort of blue is placed. We can see that the navy blue sort of hits at the bust area. We can also see that it hits right around the sort of pelvic area and on the inner thigh. And so in my opinion, I think that those sort of pieces of color are meant to sort of help shape the body and bring attention to certain areas like, which I do think is smart. The bust and the waist and the hips and things like that. But I think in general, the bodysuit really is like secondary to what I think is much more intriguing. And that is most definitely the jewelry situation going on. I love this necklace. I think it's really intriguing. It's really, really beautiful. It looks to be some sort of chainmail that's been wrapped almost sort of in a high neck collar. Gautier is most definitely somebody that historically has referenced sort of quote unquote tribalism. So looking at different sort of groups of people around the world that have very intriguing, from a Western perspective, native dress. It most definitely is a reference to the La Tatouage collection, which was spring 1994 by Gautier, which very much so sort of did a cross-cultural referencing. I mean, that's also where we first saw that very iconic sort of mesh tattoo style. So I think that's where the motif inspiration is coming from. But what I think is intriguing about Cardi's look is you do have this chainmail up top that creates this really sort of high neckline. Apparently, 
The Le Tatouage collection from spring 1994 was influenced by Joan of Arc and armor and things like that. So I'm wondering if that's where we're getting the chainmail inspiration from. But then we're also layering these sort of big silver baubles on top of the chainmail. And I feel like that is more so where you're getting the sort of indigenous dress and native sort of dress. Am I going to tell Cardi B that she can't do that? Look at my alabaster disaster. I don't really know if that's my job. I will say it's certainly something that we're picking up on. The antennas are antennaing. I'm getting my spidey senses. And then right sort of below the wrist, we can see that the baubles and the coils continue. Again, this is most definitely a direct reference to the Le Tatouage necklaces and jewelry and things like that. These coils literally were necklaces from that collection. So I think that that's definitely where this reference is coming from. Will I say that it's a great look in terms of the jewelry and the bodysuit? Yeah, I think it looks really cool. I think it's really fun. I think it's a lot less aggressive, I would say, in terms of like cultural appropriation than the original collection. Do I think there's certainly still things to unpack? Absolutely. But do I think that she looks good? I would say most definitely. Yes, I just, I love that high sort of collar. I'm sure that it's probably a reference to the Cayenne tribe who have those really beautiful sort of gold rings around their neck, which elongates their necks. It's not exactly gold rings, it's the chain mail, so I guess it's kind of different, but beautiful silhouette, looks really good always, so. We then had Cardi wear Scaparelli. Now this was kind of the first show of the season, and in reality, it's the one that sort of started the whole thing off with a bang, and that's how you knew that Cardi was there. The full look that Cardi is wearing is a black velvet strapless gown. It's form-fitting, it's really, really beautiful. And then she's wearing this big over-the-top coat and a i don't know how she's roasting her ass off you know what i mean like i'm dying in a t-shirt shorts and sandals she is wearing a literal coat in france in the summer i'm gonna tell you one thing about france girls don't really air condition much so do with that what you will but the coat looks amazing. So the thing about this jacket that's really intriguing, obviously, is this texture. We saw it actually on the runway for the fall 2023 show as well. But Cardi's is a shrug sort of style with a very big collar and very big sleeves. And the other thing that I think is really intriguing about the look is it seems to be, I would presume, a sort of wool that has been sort of twisted to almost create these intriguing cylindrical shape. Almost looks like the wool has been twisted and it creates these really really intriguing shapes and wool will hold that shape for a while. The other thing that I think is really intriguing is for the fall 2020 collection, which Scaparelli did, but wasn't really like a collection. It was actually all sketches by Daniel Roseberry. He showed a look that was a white look and it sort of had a similar vibe because he referenced a dog called the Bergamasco. Now the Bergamasco is a Italian sheepdog of some sort. But what happens to its hair for some reason, I don't know, I didn't Google it, but it seems to also do this thing where it almost like mats into itself and creates these sort of long, also cylindrical strands of hair. And so I wonder if Daniel is actually creating this Bergamasco effect that we saw in a sketch originally and now doing it on the runway. And that's what's happening here for Cardi. Either way, whatever the reason is, I love it. I think it's fun. I think the texture is really cool. I love the shape of the sleeves. I love the bountiful color. It's really great. And then the dress underneath obviously is meant to sort of be not taking up as much space as the jacket, but it still is a really, really smart way of going about doing Scaparelli. As we always talk about Scap, it is most definitely a brand that is about black and gold. Those are the signature colors. It's what Elsa Scaparelli referenced quite often. It's what she made her suits in, just how she operated as a designer in the 1930s. We can see that this black velvet dress is here. Again, it's fitted, it's beautiful, but at the neckline of the strapless style, there is gold embroidery that is meant to look like the measuring tape centimeters as referenced when we look at the shocking Scaparelli perfume that Scaparelli put out back in what, 1930s? I, maybe it was the 40s, but I think it was the 30s. Because on the bottle, there was a little sort of body shaped bottle and wrapped around it is what looks like a piece of a measuring tape that has the little sort of lines that show you centimeter 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 so that's what's being referenced here and right at the center of the stomach we can see there's almost looks to be like a little door knocker we see a lot of scaparelli reference keyholes so the door knock little gold jewelry applique on the belly button area think it's perfect, think it makes sense. Overall, love this Cardi look, very fantastic, very fashion, she is the star, I love her. Listen, the Cardi party does not stop, and next we were talking about her Tom Brown look. Listen, Cardi is a Tom Brown woman, she has been wearing Tom Brown, I 
think since she sort of became famous. And this look is most definitely a reference to the fall 2023 Ready to Wear collection. Only really, I guess, more so because of the headpiece that she wears, which is directly from that collection. And also I think the bag is too. It's a really beautiful sort of clock bag in black, white, and gold. But as for the actual look that Cardi wears, it is a form-fitting sort of dress that looks like a blazer. So it has lapels, has a little deep plunge, but at the waist it really nips in. At the sort of hip area, it expands. There's a gold sort of belt wrapped around the waist. Don't know if that was necessarily necessary, but I don't hate it either. It's not, you know, so egregious that I can't stop looking at it. Then the dress sort of falls right below the knee. There's a white pump of sorts. It's not really super Tom in terms of the pump experience, but overall, it's not my favorite Tom Cardi look by far, but I don't think it's horrible. I think it fits her decently. I think it could fit a little bit better in the hip area, but love the headpiece, like the bag. The rest, I could take it or leave it. And then we have Cardi in Valentino. She's wearing the Valentino V logo. It is essentially sort of just a logo maniaification of the Valentino V logo. She's wearing this cat suit that honestly fits her phenomenally. I really, really love the fit of it on her. I think it looks fantastic. I think it looks beautiful. The one thing that I don't really love about Cardi and these bodysuits is that they do sort of hit right above the ankle. I wish that they were kind of full cat suits and they really sort of covered the foot area because we keep seeing these like strappy pumps and it just sort of throws off like the full fantasy of it. But to be honest, like I can look past that because I do think that here this fits her so well. The Valentino V logo bag that matches and also this robe, cape, jacket. It makes sense. I'm with it. I don't hate it. I like the fact that it's intriguing. It has a train. It sort of seems to be split in a certain area. So it creates a little bit of grandeur as she walks. It's not my favorite thing. It's not my least favorite thing. It's fine. I'm, I'm decent with it. We then had Diane Keaton wearing Tom Brown. Listen, I like this seersucker. That was my name in high school. Listen, it is a three-piece suit, so it's a high-waisted pair of seersucker pants, a blazer, and a vest. There's also a seersucker tie, a white shirt underneath, a big belt, big, big belt, but the thing is, it's also done in the seersucker, so I really, I don't hate it as much. Also, it's like on a suit, so like a belt makes sense. I get it. I feel like it's meant to be a very sort of summery outfit, and I think it really works. I think it sells you on the fact that Tom is not just a brand that does these gray, suits. They also make suits in a wide variety of fabrics and motifs. It doesn't always have to be the very gray, gray world of TB. But, you know, your seersucker can be in a gray and white like this. It can be light and fun and summery. I love the hat. And then when you mix it with that little rattan Hector bag, which the Hector bag, if you don't know, is the bag that is based on Tom's dog, Hector, who's a little Dachshund Hound, he's very cute, and they make the bags in all different styles. So I love the fact that there is a rattan version. It's, it's a stalk of a plant. I don't know if the rattan plant is a plant, but I know that rattan is the, the way that you weave it, and it's a hard, very strong, sturdy thing. Don't hit yourself with it, it really hurts, let me tell you. Diane Keaton is giving summer vibes. I love it, I think it's fun, I think it's cool, I think it makes sense specifically for being in Paris in July, I'm sold on it. Next up we have Emma Chamberlain and she is wearing Tom Brown. I love this look, I love this for Emma, it's fashion, she's giving, I'm sold. So she's wearing a little Tom Brown shirt, it's easy, it's breezy, it's beautiful, it's a dress shirt, wonderful. But we also have this little Ooh, corseted dress. Look at the boning on that dress. Like the boning goes crazy. It is also, I believe, a little sheer shucker style. It's all in white. And that dress fits her fantastically. It sucks her in. It looks cool. I love the fact that it also doesn't cover the bust area. It allows the bust area to be covered by the actual dress shirt underneath. I think it's fun. It's a little bit more risque for Tom Brown. I love it. I think as we move down, we can still see the seersucker effect going on. And then she's wearing a red patent leather bag and a white and red pump. I like it. I think they play off of each other well. I think it's smart. And then the jacket, also in this little seersucker, it's great. It's wonderful. This is Emma looking fashion. She looks glamorous. She looks hot. She looks sexy. She also looks smart and secure and all of those things. And I think that's like what makes a great Tom Brown look is that ability to look cool and suave and hot and desirable, but also you're dressed up, you're refined, you're in suiting, but it's different and avant-garde. And like, she just looks amazing, very happy, very proud. We then had Emma in a Valentino look. It is a sheer style lace top that has a little black tie over top. It's this light pink sort of shirt with the lace sort of exposing right above the sort of bust area and then covering the actual 
bust itself. We then have a mini feather skirt, which I think is intriguing. Listen, I think proportionally, I don't love it. I think that the shirt, moving into the skirt, I think it's a little awkward. I don't really get it. And then I think the length of the skirt is also kind of weird. I do like the Valentino bag. I think it's cute. I think it's fun. I like the sleeves. I like the collar and the, the tie effect. I think it's cool. It fits in with what Valentino did for their fall 2023 collection. But there's just something about the proportion of the skirt that's throwing me off and I'm not really understanding it. So sad. But Emma still had a great Tom Brown moment that I will honestly put in like her top five top three maybe even next up we have Florence Pugh wearing Valentino as well this is a custom halter neck style it is flouncy in this very periwinkle blue it's very sheer has a deep plunge and it's sleeveless it's also I think backless to a degree but Florence understands that she has to play with the fabric she has to let it sort of fly and move and groove and do its thing do you think works? In the grand scheme of things, very simple Valentino, I would say, but I think the color is really wonderful. I think that she is also understanding that she has to sell the garment, so she really, she tried it. So again, A for effort. I'd say like a B for execution. I'm not obsessed with it. I don't think it's super memorable, but I don't think that she looks bad whatsoever. I just think it's a kind of simple sheer dress. Next up we have Kathy Hilton. Listen, I mean, she's wearing Jamba Tisavali. I'm just kind of obsessed with her. I really like this Jamba dress. I love the floral motif. I love the fact that she has her little wrap over top. I think it's super sweet, super mother vibe. I'm into it. I'm sold on it. The other thing that I love is she's wearing this little mini Kelly in rattan with a little leather and this brown. It's very hermes and it honestly tracks for Kathy, to be completely honest, like only her. I love the shape of the dress on her. I think it's Beautiful. I like the fact that it's sleeveless, but she's probably wanting to cover her arms, I, I presume, because she's wearing this little shawl situation. But I think she does a really good job of incorporating the shawl into the look. I love the motif. I think that it reminds me, honestly, of some sort of like floral book, something old school, a little bit rustic, a little bit intriguing, something you find in like your great, great, great grandfather's library somewhere, if you have that. I just like the look for Kathy. I think it works. I think it's really nice. Next up with Kendrick Gamar, he's wearing Chanel. It's a lot of Chanel going on. He's wearing a pair of black jeans that seem to have the Chanel double C logo and Camellia's running through it. And they're in sort of like a chain trellis motif, just black jeans by Chanel. What a been fine I think just my thoughts the baseball hat with the Chanel I also think is like too much and now I'm trying to figure out if like they're trying to get Kendrick Lamar to be the new Pharrell Williams for Chanel I don't really know if that's what they're trying to do because they lost him to Louis Vuitton but like if they are intriguing he's wearing what seems to be white t-shirt and then a collarless Chanel white tweed jacket I just don't know if Kendrick yet has mastered the art of Chanel styling I don't think many people at Chanel have but I think Kendrick might be one of them the thing about Pharrell with Chanel is like he really sold it to you I'm not buying it at all you know what I mean I need Kendrick to like work a lot harder at making this experience chic because right now it feels very Logomania with the Chanel tweed jacket. And like, that's bad. It's not good at all. It's very unsettling and uncomfortable for me to look at. So please fix this, everyone involved. We then had Lotto in Iris Van Herpen as well. I love the dress. It's really, really beautiful. This is from the fall 2022 Iris Van Herpen collection. It's really stunning. The pinks, the purples, the lace usage to almost look like veins. So wonderful. I love the sleeves on it. I love the sort of wavy approach that they take and it mirrors what's going on as we reach sort of the hem of the dress. These sort of wavy, almost thin sort of come down. They ombre from this really dark purple and then it's like an indigo and then into white. Like it's amazing what she can do with clothing. You know what I mean? Like this dress looks beautiful on Lotto. I also think that she's really trying in the sense of like makeup and hair and really sort of working to put all of it together. So I'm very happy. Next up we have Laura Dern and Emma Thompson at Armani Privé. They're both wearing suits. I'm not really understanding the situation. Like one of Laura Dern's pant legs looks amazing. The other one I am very concerned by. The jacket on Laura Dern in black, I like. I think that the velvet on the lapels and the pocket, it makes sense. It's cute. I like the fact that she rolled up the sleeves. It looks okay. It looks fine. I'm not loving it. I'm not hating it. It's just there. Emma Thompson's look, don't know if I'm sold on. The pink, I get. I think it's fun. She's fun. I love that. It seems to be some sort of silk tank top as well going on underneath. Two, the white shoes. Yeah, I just, I don't really get like the split 
hem pant situation. I think that silk also reads really like wrinkly and drapey and like it looks like a Sharpe was dyed violent pink and I don't love that element of it. So yeah, thank you. Bye. Next up we have Lupita Nyong'o and she is wearing Chanel. It's a purple tweed vest and matching short short. It's sparkly. Listen, the color looks fantastic on her. It really, really does. I like the fact that we went for a similar color in terms of the bag, although like not obsessed with the bag. And the shoes, I understand that they're meant to be like a 20s and 30s shoe reference. I still think they're ugly. If I looked at them in the museum, I would say, oh my God, they're ugly. But I understand that the cultural significance of them at the time. Right now, I don't need the cultural significance to play to me. They're just ugly. That's it. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Really good to see you. The thing about Lupita is, listen, she's stunning. She's gorgeous. She really can sell you on anything. And like, my spidey senses are tingling. And I'm like, it's not great. I appreciate the short short element. I appreciate the sleeveless vest because it's trying to be a little bit more, I guess, summery. Altogether, it's not selling me on it. It like babyifies her and I don't love that at all. I just, I don't get it. I don't like it. I love the color again. I really do think that it's wonderful on her. I just wish that there was something different in proportions, in cut, in silhouette. It would make me very happy and very less uncomfortable. Next up we have Maisie Williams and she is wearing Tom Brown. She is also in a sear sucker. The thing about this Tom Brown look is I think it's very, very diverse in terms of what we're going for texturally. Again, you have this really nice white and blue sear sucker in this big long blazer. And then there is this really cool kick pleat skirt, but it's only like partially kick pleated. The sear sucker lines, they run down. And I would say right about at the top of the thigh area, they branch off into pleats and there is a sort of lining in the actual lining of the pleat that is this sort of light blue with red and white stripes that weirdly enough a matches up with the color of the hector bag and also matches up with the colors of the actual corset that is sitting on top of the skirt it's intriguing i think it's smart i think it's fun also the tie is matching i'm seeing there i really like the fact that there's a lot going on here i'm not obsessed with it from like a super chic amazing wonderful perspective but i am obsessed with the fact that we're able to layer so much texture and motif and things like that all in one look. Overall, I'm sold on it. It's okay. I'm good with it. Next up, we have Michelle Yeoh in Balenciaga. She is writing out that Balenciaga contract. I'm pretty positive because she has to. And she is wearing this yellow pleated dress. It has a deep plunge. It has a very cape-like sleeve. There is a seam situation going on right at the waist and that sort of allows the yellow pleat to run down too. Wearing a little Balenciaga hourglass bag. Listen, I'm doing this for Michelle. She's in the contract, you know what I mean? Like she gotta, she gotta work, she gotta go, she gotta get paid. In terms of Michelle Yeoh, I think it's fine. I think it's nice. I don't hate it. I think it fits her really, really well. I think she's stunning. I think she really can pull off most things. This makes sense. It seems like Balenciaga also is very much of toning down her wardrobe and making it to be a little bit more conservative. There might be other reasons why Balenciaga is doing that, but it definitely seems like with Michelle, she's trying to go for a lot more casual, calmer vibes, and she looks good, you know? Next up, we have Natalie Portman wearing Dior. I love this dress. I love this dress so much. It's so beautiful. This reminds me of Raph at Dior when he was there. There were these beautiful jacquard styles that were woven so they almost looked blurry and I think that that's what's happening here. Maria Grazia says, let me take from everybody else because I'm running out of doing the same thing over and over again. And I'm like, you know what? That's fine by me. I think that the little belt in the center, not really needed, but I love this floral shape, it's very Dior, it's very flowery. I do really think that the strapless style with a little bit of a bouffant skirt really works. I think Natalie Portman's selling it. I think she knows that her Dior contract is like, I can do whatever I want, so I'm gonna do it. She's working the contract and I'm very happy for her because she looks great all the time recently and very, very into this. So love this little jacquard moment. It's very great. Thank you, Rafa Dior, I appreciate you. Then we had Shakira, Shakira. She's wearing Victor and Rolf. It is an iconic look. Now Shakira is wearing a take on the very iconic fall 2008 haute couture show by Victor and Rolf, which had these no shape letter situations that created an exaggerated shoulder. And it's really fun. It's really three dimensional. It's pretty much a, a meme at this point. It's cool. And so I like the fact that Shakira A is wearing a recreation of the look in a trench coat sort of fashion. The white style with the little crystal piping, I think works. I think it's fun. I think it makes sense. I also think for Shakira, 
It's really different. She's not usually super fashion, avant-garde, funny, haha. She's more sort of like Shakira, Shakira. I appreciate her doing this and I will be thinking about this look often because this is the new meme for me. It's recreated. It's how I feel. No, all the time. I thank her for this. It makes me very happy. And finally, we have Sydney Sweeney wearing Armani Privé. I don't love this. It is very dumb yay looking, you know, very checkerboard kind of vibes. There's a matte and a shiny speeding situation in this black floor length gown. I just don't know if this is the silhouette for Sydney Sweeney. I don't think that it works. It looks too long. Sleeves look too long. I think the hem looks too long. I also just think it's a little weird on her. I don't really know if she's like selling me on it. It feels very normal Sydney Sweeney hair face. And then this sort of like dress. It feels very kind of Elvira. And I need you to like lean into it more because it almost feels like a little too grown up for Sydney. I think that's how I feel. And I'm sorry but it's, there's just something about it. Like the fit is fine, except for the sleeves and the hem, but there's just something about it that feels like it doesn't read her normal sort of vibe, her normal sort of fun and cool and kind of nice light aura. And I don't know if she's really selling you on the dark element of it. So that has to change. I was very sad about this. This could have been great. So let's talk about best and worst. Let's get her done. Best, I'm going to give Cardi B and Scaparelli. I'm going to give it Emma Chamberlain and Tom Brown. I'm going to give it to Camila Cabello and Iris Van Herpen and Lotto and Iris Van Herpen. Kathy Hilton, John Batista Valley, Diane Keaton, Tom Brown. Yeah. Oh, Natalie Portman and Shakira. Sold. Worst dressed, Lupita Nyong'o, Laura Dern, Emma Thompson, Camila Cabello, Sydney Sweeney. Yeah, so... Please let me know what you thought of all the looks from the Oak Chore season. I will see you guys in the next video in TTY. Oh.